Okay, I finally got this deck to about 90, 98%, and I'm very happy with it. I've got it primed, got all the posts in place, brand new posts from Century Porch Posts, and the deck, you can see the deck's got a couple of coats of linseed oil on it, and in my previous video I talked about this room that we were restoring, and here you can see pretty good with the sheetrock. Just have a couple more coats with the spackle and then we start priming. And this has been about a year and four months worth of work. Part time. It certainly shouldn't have taken that long, but when I did it primarily alone, that's what it takes. But in this video, you'll see me fully assembling the parts, painting, priming, some of this woodwork that needed a little bit of restoration and of course the door i put the new saddle on the door we scraped i did some remaking of this molding and enjoy thanks for joining me Okay, now we're back in time a few months ago. What you're seeing here is we had a lot of water damage on this section of the house. The rain was coming through the clapboard and rolling down the wall. And so the paint was not sticking at all. So I had to scrape it all off. I scraped it all as deeply as I possibly can. I sanded it, scraped it, sanded it. And now what I'm doing is I'm applying a primer coat. And this is just, I think, a zinzer, a zinzer, oil-based primer coat and uh, you'll notice when we paint the porch poles the porch poles are all painted with a linseed oil but I find it's difficult to use linseed oil on a flat wall because the linseed oil is just so runny we, we bought white linseed oil paint and the plan was to try and use linseed oil everywhere because of the the advocates that do restoration recommend it but this is under a covered porch hopefully the rain will not access this area anymore and this paint is creamy it fills cracks the house is old i have to face it it's never going to be perfect but the cracks and the crevices all eventually get filled with this creamy paint and then i go back in with some with some uh, dap and now this is the entrance to the house it had this really elaborate molding which was missing a big piece of it and I kept working at night. You'll see there's a piece of molding missing on one side. I scraped it and primed it and then scraped it and kept seeing where it needed. You see that one piece on the right side is missing. And I make the threshold, which is my next project. We ripped the old threshold up and there's the old threshold. And this is a nice piece of oak that was one inch thick. I had to mill it down to about seven eighths. So we mill it down mill it down to the right thickness. And thankfully, uh, the person who ripped the, the threshold out did not throw it away because it is a perfect template. A lot of stuff happens when I'm on vacations or rather on business trips. I come home and things are all ripped apart. And so it's, it's up to me to figure out how to put it back together. And I use the old threshold as the template. And I'm gonna take it over to the bandsaw and bandsaw out those silhouettes of the edge best I can and the threshold in this in this house all the thresholds are old school in the way that they don't have a pocket for the door to stop against there's really no room for a door sweep to stop against the positive edge I could always add that later but I wanted just for the historical look to be similar to the other door the door thresholds around the house and, but by making it out of oak, um, making it a little bit more upscale, you can see it's probably made out of pine. And I'm just following the bevels on the original one. Like I said, if you ever need to do a piece of replacement, always save the pulled out part. In fact, I had to pull it out of the garbage. It, it was in a garbage bin. Thankfully, I found it because I could have scribed it in, but it's already there. There's no reason not to. And I'm just giving a little bit of palm sand. You see, I had to add a little piece to it. And on my front porch, there was this big empty gap right there. That piece of oak fills in that gap underneath both sides of the crown molding. There was something there that was gone. Since I've owned this house, those 
gaps have been under that that door molding and so now you see I have it all fit so it will all come together nice and I use epoxy from Total Boat the Fixo Thixo and there's the piece of molding I made to replace the piece that was there I use the router and the table saw to mimic the profile and this is the Thixo which works really well it's all weather Thixo and I put a little ledge up underneath that spacer right in front that's in front of the threshold. I put a little ledge so it doesn't kiss the top of the deck, at least not at the visible edge. It's raised up a little bit, which just makes it look a little bit nicer, in my opinion. And I'm just giving a little dab of the Thixo everywhere. I used the Total Boat varnish, spar varnish, to paint all those parts in preparation for putting it up. And you could see the damaged ceiling inside my foyer, which one of these days I'll get to fix in that as well. And it's an old house like this. One project leads directly to the next. We ripped all the interior walls out of that one office that I showed in the beginning of the video. And it, the slats broke through the wall in the, other, in the other room. I had to repair the other room. But here, finally, the day we've been waiting for, the Century Porch Post show up from Century Porch Post just over the border in Canada covering up my address and the Century Porsche posts were made to order they were fairly expensive but they're going to be there for a hundred years it's, it's not a it, it's definitely better than the replacement porch posts I've gotten in the past from Home Depot or Lowe's they are pieced together but all of them by the way this is these are all also pieced together but with a much higher quality glue and the ones I bought in the past have not weathered the storm. They've been out in the weather and I go and look at them and the, the finger joints are all separated and pulling apart. You can see how they came. We got 10 porch posts and there you can see them all lined up in preparation for opening them up and getting them ready to be painted. Considering that we pre-paint them sitting and lying down, I was able to use the linseed oil. It was much easier to paint them. And uh, since the top of the deck was already there and in place, I did the linseed oil has basically the consistency of human blood so it has a splatter and a flicker that will get just about everywhere if you're not careful and so here uh, did a little bit of research and found out that uh, some people like to use about 70 percent linseed oil with 30 percent paint and that's what we did here that was the recommended by the supplier of that linseed oil so we have a nice whitewash and we whitewashed it a couple times until we finally put a nice coat of paint on them and you can't really tell in this it's overexposed but this is really more still the whitewash stage and as a matter of not boring everybody I painted it off camera now we're finally prepped and ready to go I did paint the end grain I made sure that the end grain was all painted now these are 96 inches tall and it is important that they are each fitted in their exact sections as hard as I did try to make sure the porch was level in every aspect there are parts that are not level to be perfectly honest and I did the best I could and in my old adage if it looks straight it is straight it certainly looks 100% more straighter than it did before we started this whole restoration project there was lots of spots that were severely drooped and dipped now everything looks fairly straight but as you go around it goes from 94 and a half all the way on one side, all the way around to the other side to say 92 and a half. So there's a two inch discrepancy from pole number one when you go all the way around to pole number 10. And I tried my best to disguise it and make it seem as discreet as possible. And only I can really point out where I know that there's problems. Most people aren't even looking. And because the house does have some fairly big droops in, in the various parts of it because it is over 200 years old it's disguised in the sagginess of the whole entire picture but as I said the, the top of the deck is fairly straight it's, it's the distance between the deck and the roof that I had trouble with and uh, if I lift it up one some other spot became severely unlevel and then I try and correct it and the other spot came a little bit better into level so it was a compromise all around and here I'm just using the circular saw, the six and a quarter circular saw, and then the hand saw to finish up. All the end grain gets painted. Everything's getting tapped into place. And all of these columns are on screw jacks. 
I did my best to keep the screw jacks over the year from leaving stains on the deck, but sometimes I couldn't afford it. I didn't let the steel touch the deck, but even that piece of wood underneath the steel cone of the screw jack influenced the wood on top of that. I did palm sand as much of it as I can. It's disguised as best as possible, but it still shows a few spots where there was a footprint from the screw jack. But as I said in the beginning, I did this whole video, I did most of this work completely alone and waiting on long segments. I'm putting the columns back where the original ones were. So you could see I had these little flying buttresses that came up and off, these little gussets, which I did not put back because I didn't like the way they looked. Try to make it as clean and sterile as possible. To me, that just looks a little bit more upscale without all the extra fluff in the gingerbread. The gingerbread stuff looks good if it's done well, but you really need to have that gingerbread everywhere. It has to be really done well. You have to really commit to deciding what color to paint it. I am not that specific. I am not that artistic when it comes to painting homes. So by sticking to just one solid white, I know I could at least be safe and it will still look good. And it's really nice seeing these columns come together after all this time. And everything gets toenailed in with a screw uh, at the top and then also at the bottom. So I do get some heavy winds coming across this porch. It was my fear all year long that the porch might get a little bit of a aerodrome lift or a lift like a wing. And then the porch poles will all fall out and then the whole roof of the deck will fall down. That's this is the type of things that keep me awake at night. So ultimately I went in and I put the few that you see there in that picture <clears throat> I put them in and put toenail screws into those temporary columns as well I'm finally rounding the corner which really made me feel really good I knew there was still a ton of work to do as far as painting and the deck top at this point was fairly precious anytime I introduce paint or caulking I want to make sure I cover the deck completely there you could see some of the footprints from the screw jacks that were sitting on a piece of two by six. And I was able to disguise most of that, but that oxidation is really hard to get rid of completely. And now here I'm finally putting in the last column and that happens to be the shortest column. So from one side all the way over to there, we lose about two inches, give or take, quarter. And it is strange because that part of the deck from the house to the edge is six feet. The front is seven feet and the other side is 11 feet. So it almost seems like a geometric conundrum that the deck would stay parallel, come off the house at the same exact roof line to the top of the pitches and then come out and stay in the same space. I wonder if, uh, if I made that in CAD, if I could actually make that work. I mean, I'm sure it worked. It's, it just seems weird to me that it, that it actually does work. And here we are just doing the final walkthrough. Again, I do paint the deck several times since this particular shot and actually uh, and this is the back where it's 11 feet deep yeah I'm really just relishing in the fact that I got this done now the hard work comes all that stuff was fairly easy the hard part now is scraping all the paint finding whatever little restoration woodwork needs to be done not too much I had a lot of situation here with this door jam. Either side of the door jam was really beat up from just years of screwing locks into it and whoever else did it. So I gave it a quarter inch layer of poplar on both sides and it also came down and gave me a nice clean look at the, the, the door saddle. I was able to cover the top edge of the door saddle. Now looking around you could see where I need to scrape and sand in some of that stuff and there's a lot of water damage, just to the paint alone though, not necessarily to the wood. Here Joey comes down and he realizes he thinks there's some termites up there. Nothing's rotted, right? He's pointing, he's saying, I think we have termite damage, but that is right where the wood, you could see up underneath where the, the clapboard is damaged, the up underneath ceiling, and it's all just water damage. Oh, right there. And there's a little bit of rot right That's there. there I just treated it and it's, it's, hopefully the water is gonna be subsided from the amount of abuse it took and I'll get another couple seasons out of it before I need to change that whole fascia board right there 
the up underside, the beadboard should be completely replaced, but that is another year and a half project if you ask me. So I'm gonna do the best I can to paint it and put some dap to close up some of the gaps and then see if I can get a couple of more seasons out of it. But it would be best if I ripped out the whole entire clapboard up underneath and redid it. I want to do it to the back deck, so maybe I'll do it all at the same time, order at the same time and make it match. And now I'm putting fascia boards on the deck itself. If you watch video one, you'll see how much nuts and bolts and screws all went into because that rim edge that I made is all overlapped two by eights all the way around. And I overlapped them and bolted them together. And I felt that would be the strongest. And here you see the piece cut to fit over the stonework. We have a guy named Ken who does beautiful stonework here. He's done all the stonework. It's just taking so much time. We haven't had a chance to do any of the landscaping that goes inside the stonework. So I have a beautiful bed of garden weeds inside both of the stone beds. Just everything just takes forever, especially when you're a one man operation and you're getting very little help from the crew. And just looking back, I'm really proud of it. Now we have to paint up underneath. And I said, that's the hard part. Painting for me is no fun. You just have to like scuba diving, just you're going to get completely underwater with the paint. It's going to be in your hair. It's going to be in your nostrils for me. I've seen painters at the deli getting sandwiches and they're also covered with paint. So I know it's just the way it is. But now I must cover the deck with plastic. So from Uline, I buy a 400 pound roll of plastic and I cover the whole entire deck. And this was a half a day job in and of itself, laying out this plastic and making sure that it's taped down, isn't gonna blow away on a breezy day. I said, more power to the contractors that are diligent and pay attention to everything they do, and make sure that paint doesn't get on the deck top and so on and so on. And so, I'm giving myself a little pat on the back there, but you see how much plastic I had to use, and that is absolutely necessary because when I'm painting up underneath here, like you're seeing, some of these stains need five coats. You do it, you go back, you do it, you go back. So this is over the course of about three days, painting and covering and painting and covering. And I'm using that creamy, I'm pretty sure you could see the bucket sitting there. It's a Home Depot two gallon bucket. I guess it was a Zinzer maybe, or a one, two, three, I forget what it was called. But now here, just moving the ladder over 10 inches at a time and reaching in 10 inches at a time. I tried for one second a spray gun and it was not enough. It was way too messy and the water, it had to be watered down too much to actually do any work. So you could see this has been years of non-paint. As a matter of fact, I last painted the house in 2006. So here it is, however many years ago that was. 2010, somewhere around there. So it's it's been at least 12 years that the house got painted. It's still in really good shape. It's just this porch took such a beating because of the weather and the edge and so on and so on. But you see, what it just there's nothing to it but just to do the work. Uh, unfortunately, there's no easy way. Like a few friends stopped by and said, why don't you spray it? I said, because it's going to get everywhere and I'm just going to have to spray it 50 times and every time you spray it, it has to get more overspray. I had to cover all the stonework, but now you see it's starting to pull together. Visually, there's not blemishes, there's not missing paint in various spots. And again, that creamy paint started filling in a lot of the cracks in the upper ceiling. I'm just uh, really proud of the fact that this took so long and it's just about done. There's still some splits up in that upper board work that the only way to fix it is to pull it out and put it back in. And you could see, uh, unfortunately, from the beginning of the video number one, we had to get rid of two huge trees that were just to the, to the left of the porch. I was afraid they were going to fall. Again, just doing some more survey. That's my good luck charm. That's my uh, fertility statue. I don't have any kids, so it doesn't work that well. And jamming lots and lots of paint in all the cracks. And now it's time to go back and fill all this edge with a dap filler. And that was probably about a half a day's worth of work, just squirting this in every crack that I could see. I just stood back and wherever I saw dark 
against the light. I knew there was a crack that needed to be filled. It's like Superman. And this was a messy job. And I just kept on a pair of gloves and I just kept wiping it into place. And then when that dried, I went back over it with some paint. Now, there's probably some guys that think I'm crazy and doing it all wrong. But I would certainly pay the right guy to do this if I could find him. I don't think he exists. So this is me being a weekend warrior. I make a lot of things, but construction work is not something I've ever really enjoyed doing. And it's not something I ever really had enough practice at to do it accurately in the way some of you are watching this and saying, you know, this is gonna happen because you did that wrong and that's gonna happen because you did that wrong. I feel like I've mitigated the harm that this house was, was experiencing because of this bad deck. And it's like trimming your beard. If you trim your beard, everything else starts to look good. And by fixing up the deck and reducing the harm it was experiencing due to weather and age and just replacing completely what needed to be replaced, I feel like I've, I've given this house a tremendous facelift. And I'm really proud of that. And like I said, if I had to do it again, I would certainly find the right person to pay. <laughs> so if he's out there, make yourself known. But I'm thinking because I did this next summer, I'm going to do the back deck. I have your traditional barbecue deck style one by six boards that are rounded on each edge that have air gaps between them because they shrink and expand. Next summer, I'm going to rip up my whole back deck and do a surface just like this one. If you're still here, I want to say thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you guys watching the channel and being part of my journey. Thank you very much.